Election College, episode number 31. The Johnson administration is a disaster. Grant rises to power and the Republicans are divided. Let's throw a political party. Face it, the political scene sucks, but did it always? It's time for election college and class is in session. Now, your hosts, Jason Goff and Ben Smith. Oh man, Jason, can you believe that President Johnson? That rascally rascal. I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say rascally rabbit, but that would have been weird. (laughs) I I, I would have been saying wascally rabbit. Wascally. Right, right. Man, he just, um, between the corruption and the racism and just being in general a bad leader, that was not a great presidency. And no, it wasn't. It's kind of funny though, because you've got the guy before Lincoln, Buchanan, and he's a disaster. You got Lincoln, who some would say that he's the best president ever, and others would say, oh my goodness. <laughs> what a train wreck. Uh, yeah, exactly. And yeah. then everybody agrees. Buchanan, it, it just didn't go so well. And then Johnson, uh-uh. Nope. So, but whenever the president gets assassinated, you got to have somebody. So we get Johnson and we talked about that, of course, ad nauseum, but um, just remember that if you're getting impeached and uh, probably, probably you're not doing something right somewhere along the line. Right. So it's 1868 and we're getting ready to elect a new president, but let, let's back up. A little bit and talk about that crazy Democratic presidential nomination because Johnson is a Democrat and you would think that they're going to support the incumbent, right? Oh, always. You never you never go against the incumbent, obviously. Yeah, but unless unless it's Johnson. right? (laughs) And uh, of course, unless you've got a guy by the name of Horatio Seymour. (laughs) Sure. I mean. If I if I had knew a guy named Horatio, I would want him to be the president. That's all there is to it. Right. And if his name is Horatio and he has a neck beard, <laughs> you're really going to vote for him. So basically every we've established everybody doesn't like Johnson. They're they're just kind of like, okay, listen, we know this is the routine. We're not going to do it. Um, they can't agree that they should vote on them. And so they go through all these different ballots. Should we vote for, um, I don't know, Andrew Johnson? Heck no. Should we jo- <laughs> vote for Joel Parker? No, nope, not a chance. How about James Doolittle? Oh, he's a nice guy. Oh, no, nope, sorry. Still not going to happen. And so they continue down the line and down the line and down the line. Yeah. And so they keep on going. Uh, and the thing is he's losing popularity with every vote that goes by and you've got Horatio. He's the convention chairman and he's all cool, right? Cause he's the former governor of New York and people are starting to like him the further along we go in the voting process. Yeah. And somewhere along the line, um, somebody's like, Hey, I think I'm going to write Horatio down. Like, I think that'd be a funny joke. <laughs> I could just see it. Like, oh, watch this. Horatio is going to kill me. Uh, whatever we have drinks next week, he's going to be upset that I even wrote his name down. <laughs> and there's nine people who put his name on the ballot, uh, on the fourth ballot from the state of North Carolina. And when the ballots are read aloud, there's this loud and enthusiastic cheering. And everybody just goes crazy. You're like, see more, see more. And he says, nope. Yeah, and he's giving this eloquent speech about why he shouldn't be the man. And somebody cries out, take the nomination then. (laughs) And so he just continues to say, no, I I can't do it. I won't do it. I I shouldn't do it. 
I'm just not the right guy. I know you think I am. I'm not the right guy. Seriously, look how humble I am. <laughs> I'm going to go to the bathroom. When I get back, we'll talk about this some more. It's kind of awkward. Have you ever been praised to the point, Ben, where it's just awkward and you're like, okay, stop it. No, what's that like? I, I have no idea. Yeah, me either. But Horatio Seymour, <laughs> he knew. So he's out there. He's he's out in the foyer. He's he's chilling. And yeah, and while he's out there in the vestibule, uh, I like the word vestibule. It doesn't really make sense, but it it's a good word. Uh, while he's out there in the vestibule, the convention <laughs> nominates him unanimously against his will. Yeah. And so Horatio is like, you know what? Okay. I guess I'll be the candidate yeah and then they um they also nominate this guy named francis preston blair jr he was a general uh they nominate him for vice president on the first ballot after a couple other guys who were kind of leading the way backed out um so needless to say uh horatio is not thrilled but he decides okay i'll go ahead and and give it my all they really want me and i believe in democracy so i'm gonna do this what a guy I know. It's very selfless of him. So <laughs> if you're a Republican and you're in 1868, what better way to win the presidency than let's get the war hero out? Yeah, why not? I think it's a great I mean, idea. Yeah. As if we haven't all, as if we don't all still have enough memories from the war. Why don't we bring somebody around who everybody associates directly with the war? That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Um, who else better than General Ulysses S. Grant? Yeah, and Grant's really an interesting character. I mean, a lot of times we just think of, okay, there's the general. He was there when Lee surrendered, and he is just a rock star. He's He was the president, and his mug is on the money, and <laughs> he's buried in Grant's tomb. Uh, right. What a great guy, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, but there's a lot more to Grant, really. I mean, uh, a lot of what you mentioned is, of course, there. But a lot of people don't know that he started out. Um, he started out his adulthood, I guess you could say, as a military man. Uh, it's kind of presumed by most people that oh, if you're if you're going to be a general, you've probably been in the military your whole life. Well, not quite. He was in the military for a long time. Guy, um, shall we say, booted. Um, <laughs> respectfully yeah. at one point for being uh, a bit of a rumored drunk and it started affecting things and um, they, they, discharged, they discharged him honorably uh, but he was discharged for that fact yeah and I mean really throughout his adulthood and it's kind of interesting did you know his name actually <laughs> became Ulysses S. Grant because of uh, when he was um, nominated to go to West Point, his congressman actually messed up. Like his, yeah. his name was Hiram. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. His given name is Hiram. And they're like, Ulysses. <laughs> okay. <What? laughs> I, I mean, that sounds cool and all, but why, that's, why is that my name now? Yeah. So like for the first 17 years of his life, he's Hiram. And then the rest of his life, he's Ulysses. Yeah, sure. But anyway, so... so yeah, he couldn't keep a job after right, yeah. after he's out of West Point and he's doing his military thing and everything, all that. He really was a guy who just did this, did that. He his dad was a tanner, and he wasn't really into the family business at all. And one really cool thing was is that he was pretty he was pretty unified with his wife. I mean, they were a team, and she hung in there with him, but. Yeah, he just kind of hopped around. Yeah, Grant had a few offers um, to go elsewhere, to work elsewhere, but he pretty much said, nah, I'm, we're not doing this long distance thing. The internet, you know, it's not, it's come a long way, but it's not really where it should be. And mm -hmm. uh, we're just not going to be able to stay in touch. So he tries to farm, um, can't farm, um, that doesn't do a great job. They have a slave, uh, which. Grant's not particularly in favor of slavery, but like most people who aren't in favor of slavery in the 1800s, he has a slave. Weird how that works, I suppose. Yeah. And like when they decide we're not, we're not going to farm anymore. They really don't need the slave anymore. And they could have sold him for a lot of money. 
And being that their whole business is crumbling, they really could have used the money. And instead, he says, hey, you're free. So that's that's cool. Yeah, that's pretty noble of them uh, at that time. And So uh, the U.S. breaks out in the Civil War, 1861. What happens? Well, Grant asks, can I, uh, can I join back up? And can I, can I get back in on this thing? Yeah. So the army is like, uh, hey, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take it. You went to West Point. You're cool. Yeah. And by the way, do you want to lead the country? Would that be all right? <laughs> uh, that doesn't happen for a couple months, I guess. But <laughs> at yeah. any rate, he, he works pretty closely um, with Lincoln and all the other top dudes at the time and um, really helps lead the effort to restoring the nation and becomes the general. Yeah. And he fights in several battles and I mean, he's just, he's doing a great job and it turns out that he leads the union to victory time and time again. So uh, by the time and we're not a civil war podcast because there's a lot that could be said. Do you feel like you always have to put a disclaimer on that, Ben? Yeah, I do. I do. Because I think people who like tune in for one or two episodes are going to be like, why aren't you talking about the civil war? <laughs> Needless to say, at the end of the civil war, Lee surrenders to Grant. And Grant is like, hooray, loser. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we win, have you, ever you been- lose. I think I already know the answer to this, but have you ever been down to Appomattox Courthouse? I have not. It's, it's, I mean, it is what it is. It's a little tiny town that's a tourist trap now, but there's some fields around it. But it's kind of cool to see where everything went down and to visualize it, just like any Civil War site is to me. Cool. I'll have to make it there sometime. So, hey, Appomattox like Virginians. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a bragger. I know. <laughs> but really, a lot of people um, have mixed opinions about Grant's legacy as a general. Um, some view him as a military genius, and others say that he just won by brute force. So, um, yeah. Regardless, he we'll, did it. We'll leave it up to the Civil War podcasters and historians and people much smarter than us to duke that out. Yeah. So after Lincoln dies, he's there still the co- what's it, commander general or mm-hmm. he's still in charge of everything as far as the military goes. And he's actually helping um, kind of uh, what's the word undermine Johnson as president. Right. Uh, that whole debacle is interesting. Yeah. And Grant is like. I'm a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let, let's get into that. Yeah, the Republicans are like, okay, this is where we started this whole thing off. The, the Republicans are like, we we need to win this election. Right. We're the, we're obviously everybody knows that their political party is the right one. Um, right. We're gonna we're we're gonna bring this country back to where it needs to be, and to do that, we need to make sure we win. So, in order to do that, we need to find somebody who's popular. And agree, will agree with whatever we say. Exactly. And so the Republican Party uh, really was all about su- the, supporting black suffrage in the South. And they wanted to make sure that black citizens, African Americans, that as, as they are officially known now, which was a pretty radical statement to say that. African Americans are going to be full citizens, but the Republican right. Party was very strong on that at the time. Right. So they needed to find somebody who would uh, share those same beliefs with them, and they were like, "Hey, Ulysses, Horatio, old buddy, old pal, do you want to be a Republican?" And he's like, "Yes, I affirm what you say." Yeah. So, <laughs> Grant. He's nominated as the party's guy. Uh, they had their convention in Chicago, and the House Speaker, Skylar Colfax, he's a radical Republican, um, becomes the vice presidential candidate, and it's all about them. Yeah. 
So, I mean, you know, we think of the 1860s, other than the whole Civil War killing your brother and cousin kind of thing, as pretty <laughs> civilized, right? All the movies romanticize everything in that time period. So, obviously, all the campaigns would have been strictly above board. Uh yeah, I mean, after all the Republican campaign theme, it was like, let's have peace. So you've got Grant, he's offering all kinds of promises of peace. So you got Grant and he's all about like peace, right? Sure. Let, let's let's have it. Because why not? Exactly. Meanwhile, the Republicans, his his fellow party men are alleging all of these horrible things about Horatio Seymour. Um, Seymour's father actually committed suicide, and the Republicans were like, um, that illness, that mental illness that runs in Seymour's family, yeah, Horatio, mm, he might kill himself. Dang. That's uh, nah, I know. not cool. Yeah, and then... The accusations that were brought against Blair, the vice presidential candidate. Okay, so you got all these accusations against Seymour, and he really didn't take an active role in the campaign. Um, he went out and he was trying to, you know, be kind of above board and, and all of that. And I mean, the campaign just got ugly because. Blair, his vice presidential candidate, was very outspoken, and he was very much against radical reconstruction. Um, Seymour emphasized that his idea that change in the South should be done orderly and lawfully, Blair was not for that. And you had some division among the ranks there on the Democratic side. Yeah, and and Blair's like... um what's the word a little bit kind of shoots from the hip kind of deal says what he thinks, does what he wants. And they um, uh, asked him, the party actually asked him to make sure his campaigning stuck just in Missouri and Illinois, because otherwise <laughs> you're going to hurt the ticket. <laughs> so, right. I, okay. And so this may be divisive and we don't normally say things and, and this isn't saying things one way or another, but, Vice President Joe Biden, with all respect, kind of seems like this kind of guy to me. He kind of seems like the guy who's like, he just kind of says what he wants and does what he wants, which I respect that to some extent. Mm -hmm. But I kind of feel like, as with all vice presidents, they just kind of keep him in the back to make sure he doesn't say anything that's going right. to hurt the perspective of the party. And that's kind of what uh, Blair seems like to me, just kind of says what he thinks is true, and people don't like that. Right. So, really... As we look back on it, I mean, how many of us knew about Horatio Seymour before, well, this podcast episode? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd never heard of the dude. For and, sure. and we could back up and, and say, okay, yeah, he's a Democrat in this era, but he was the former governor of New York, and he did send troops to Gettysburg. Um, he was very loyal to the Union. Um, so he did have pockets of 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 support where people were really behind him and thought, yeah, he's the man for the job. And if we look back on it, the popular vote really seems to indicate that, hmm, um, yeah, he was pretty well liked. Uh, he actually got, I believe it was close to 47, 48% of the vote. That's of the popular vote. Now, Grant blew him away right. in the electoral vote, and it was like 73% that went to Grant on the electoral vote. So, um, Grant had more of the, you know, his his jelly was spread all around the <laughs> bread, where Seymour, Seymour wasn't. It was more in pockets, and the electoral college really benefited Grant. Right, right. And uh, it's kind of interesting uh, as we go forward to, to watch the presidency of Grant to me, because it seems like, well, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into this more in the next episode, of course, but it just seems like Grant does his best to do a lot of really good things. And there's all this other outside stuff that pushes in and just kind of taints what he's doing and what he's saying and who he is. And like I said, we'll get into that, of course. Um, but it, it's just it's a really interesting 
point of view because they say that actually uh, Horatio Seymour could have also been a, a really good president had he not been drugged through the mud by everybody and um, and just disparaged. Uh, would have been one of the one of the better presidents we've had. Yeah, and I mean Grant really had the better beard. Yeah, well, I mean, there's no doubt about that. If, if we're going to base uh, base things on beards, he probably has one of the top three. I I would agree with you on that. <laughs> but, but really, um, what we see with Grant and what we will talk about in the next episode is uh, the friends you keep really matter. Absolutely. Ben, I'm glad to call you my friend. I'm glad to call you my friend. And if I were president, I would probably make you secretary of state or something really powerful. Nice. Something not like the vice president. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, I think that's about everything we have for this episode. I want to remind everybody this super really helps us out. Anytime you're going to Amazon to do some shopping, just go to electioncollege.com slash Amazon. It'll take you right to Amazon. You won't pay a dollar or even a penny more than you normally pay, and it'll help us out in the long run. So if you uh, if you want to help us keep doing the show and keep the hosting fees paid, uh, head on over to electioncollege.com slash Amazon. Yeah, and if you want to hang out with us during the week, we are on Twitter at Election College, also over there on the Instagram, as well as Facebook and if you have, oh, how many seconds do you think it would take to head over to iTunes, Ben? Uh, I'd say open iTunes, click on our podcast, leave a review, probably like 30 or 45 seconds. Yeah, it helps us out so much to get this podcast into the hands, heads, ears, brains, hearts. Yes. And that's right where you all live with us. <laughs> so please uh, do leave us a review over on iTunes uh, especially a star rating that helps us out absolutely I think that's everything I have Jason how about you yep I'm ready to have an awesome 1868 cool we'll see you in um, four years <laughs> alright <laughs>